Hi, man. Hello, Good Mary. Morning. Thank you for being with us this morning. You are Thank in, you for having me. You are in Michigan, here. right? Michigan. Yes. And it's 8 p.m. for you. 9. No, 9 p.m. Yeah, for you. Eastern right. Standard. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah she's Eastern. Eastern. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Don't fall asleep on us. <laughs> no worries. Alex, good morning. No worries. Okay, good, morning good, evening, have, have a, a, a good evening, Michael. Good evening. Client correct. artist, the pain on rock, a rock star. A yes. Rock star. That's yeah. right. And, Mary's and Mary is also a, a, a artist on that on our Elysium expedition to the Coral Triangle uh, in 2018. Are you recording, Michael? Uh, good questions. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. I didn't see go. the dash. <laughs> right, start over. Start like over. Right, <laughs> okay. And uh, hope, hopefully, Mary will join us again in 2022 to the Antarctic this time. And then she can paint her penguins and quills, etc. Away you mm -hmm. go, Alex, please. Okay, so it's time for me to do your obligatory bio reading, Mary. Okay. So let me get into it. <laughs> so, Mary Sayer is an ocean artist known for her sea life and waterscape paintings. She illustrates her love of the ocean in oils on canvas and with an innovative art form of painting acrylics on marble and stone. Mary's works are inspired by life in the oceans, the rhythms and movements of the currents, the way the light breaks the surface and filters down to the depths. Mary's works are exhibited and collected internationally. Ocean Geographic selected Mary to participate as a featured artist on the Elysium Epic Heart of the Coral Triangle Expedition in 2018. In 2019, Mary participated as an esteemed speaker in ADEX, Singapore for a Plastic Free Ocean. Mary presented her works and a message of the importance of art in images. A diver, sailor, and avid traveler, Mary has a unique perspective into an aqueous world of wonder. As a passionate artist and ocean advocate, Mary hopes to give a voice to those that cannot speak for themselves and to promote conservation and protection for a healthy ocean and a healthy planet. So, yay. yay. So now in case you didn't know about yourself, now you know. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> you very well. It sounds better when you say it. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Mary. <laughs> it does. Thanks. Uh, well, thanks so much for being with us this evening. We're excited to be talking about some, something beautiful at a time when not everything is that way. So it'll be good. Um, so you sent me this really nice video, which I'm going to play for everybody, which kind of gives okay. them a, uh, a little uh, preview of what they're going to see more of. And I think it'll be great. So I'm going to share okay. my screen, share my sound. It's about 10 minutes and then I'll be back with you guys. Okay. To do our other stuff. Alexa, like share computer sound. Is there sound? Are we not hearing the sound? There's no sound. No. Mm -mm. Well, let's start it again. I'll play it. Are you in like a, Are you in like PowerPoint Spank Club? No, I'm not. I'm just playing the video. Um, I shared it directly and hit share computer sound. Um, but it's apparently not sharing computer sound. Okay, why don't, we, why don't we restart again? Okay. Uh, I'll leave my uh, thing on, let me know if it works. All right. Is that better? Mm -hmm. No sound? Maybe. 
Try again. Nope. Nope. Are you what? Is, what is stuff are you playing with, Alex? A canvas and with an innovative there art goes. of painting oh. acrylics on marble and stone. Start again, please. My okay. unique style of painting. Okay. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me today. My name is Mary Sayer, and I have been an ocean artist. Uh oh. Went back out, Alex. Hmm. No sound. Can you play with VLC? Is there no sound? No sound. All right, well, I'm not really sure what to do because it's, I have my computer sound shared. Um, uh, are you playing with, what, what uh, software are you playing with, VLC? Yeah. You're playing VLC? Mm -hmm. And I'm hearing it, I mean, it's extremely loud, so. Really? Huh, is there anything I should do on this you, end? No. Mary, no. do you have it on your side view? The same, the same um, video? No, I don't. Okay, never mind. Uh, Alex, I'll try it again. We, we've, uh, All right, I'll try it again. You, you, but okay. the computer sound is share, right? Yep, all three times I tried it. <laughs> all right. Oh, I wonder what's up with that. We don't know. Um, I'm gonna close something out. Why don't you narrate over it, Mary? I think you, you practiced Do you think maybe I should try it on QuickTime instead of VLC? Okay, try it. All right. All right. Hello, go. everyone. Thank you for That's joining good. me today. My name is Mary Sayer, and I have been an ocean artist known for my sea life and waterscape paintings. I illustrate my love of the ocean in oils on canvas and with an innovative art form of painting acrylics on marble and stone. My unique style of painting on marble utilize the crystalline veins within the stone to create an elegant yet organic canvas. I painted my first oil painting at the age of 10 and have found artistry as a path. My works are inspired by life in the oceans the rhythms and movement of the current, the way the light breaks the surface and filters down the depths. All creatures, great and small, with one no more important than the other. How it all works together in perfect harmony and balance. As a diver, I have a unique perspective, one that allows me insight into an aqueous world of wonder. As an artist, I feel a responsibility to display the perfection of nature, especially that which lies below the surface, and share the vision of healthy oceans with the world. This combination of art, science, and observation gives me a voice, one that informs us of reality below the waves, as well as the social and political consciousness needed above them. Art is a medium that empowers me to tell stories. It's a means of communication. Art produces a powerful reaction. Its images evoke empathy, joy, beauty, sadness, anger, fear. It spurs thinking and provides the meaning towards which action is generated. Action necessary now. As humans, we remain very, very visual within our perception of the planet. 
Images of this planet derived from art, with their sincerity, can provide a meaningful means to affect change, not only within ourselves, but to our culture universally. Meaningful images, accurate and compelling, can bring a focus the artist holds dear to an audience that otherwise might be critical, unaware, or desensitized. To portray such images in an engaging manner, understood by all, is a means to focus on its value and allow the viewer to relate, sympathize, and understand the importance. Art within all of its concepts allows us to become involved with or without knowledge. We can actually be there, not standing on the side, but a very part of the image we see. Most of the images we see of the oceans are from a photographer's perspective. So I would like to share with you some images from an artist's perspective. My work begins with an idea, usually sparked by a visual image, something I can connect with. When I work on marble, I feel like the image is in the piece and it's waiting to be painted out. Sometimes I see it immediately. Sometimes I dream it, paintings. Many times I have to contemplate the piece for a long time before I see what's there. Oils on canvas are much easier. Starting with the blank page, you can go anywhere you choose. So I make preliminary sketches from my photos. I want to determine what is my message? What is my subject? Do I want to show it in its natural environment? Um, most likely, yes. So I make a composition sketch or choose to work from a photo. Um, if you decide to work from a photo, there's usually distortion. So you will learn to make adjustments to make your painting feel like it's correct. And that's just your instinct and your knowledge of your subject. From your thumbnail sketch, there's a simple rule to follow when you're transferring your idea to your canvas. When in doubt, grid it out. With the grid, you can make your image as large as you want, keeping in line with proportion. A powerful painting has opposing values of light and darkness. The values in your painting are determined by the light source and portraying images underwater cre creates its own lighting challenges. In underwater photography, the ambient light source is above and the subject is illuminated from an art artificial light source, especially at depths. So when in a painting, you may be creating a light source that you did not actually see, and that can be challenging. Ernie Brooks' black and white photographs are the greatest examples of light and how to convey the feelings of emotion for your subject. I highly recommend studying his work and learning from the masters. I always try to determine the light source first and I practice squinting at my subject to find the values, the light, the middle, and the dark. Making value sketches are a perfect way to determine what you want for your painting. When choosing my palette, I like to use opaque and in transparent or translucent pigments. I use a very limited color palette of pure pigments and I mix my own colors rather than buying pre-mixed colors. And that brings a uh, color harmony and unity to my painting. Art is a process of decision making in which you as the artist make choices from the beginning to the end. You are in charge, so let there be joy in your work and what you create. If you're not happy with your painting or the subject matter, or if you're struggling, put it down and start a new piece, or let it dry and paint over it. 
If there's no joy in your work, you will be unfulfilled. The fulfillment is in the creation and the reward comes when you make the sale, which allows you to paint more. So that being said, I love rewards. Because who doesn't want to be able to work in their field and feel the accomplishment and confidence that yes, I can create this art and people will resonate with it and become collectors. They will relate it to their own story and connect emotionally. And that's how your painting becomes a message. It tells your story, but it connects people to their own story and experiences. I've seen a sunset that looks like that. We dove under a dock, just like the one in your painting. We saw those turtles while my family was on vacation in the Bahamas. I hear their stories all the time, and I think that's wonderful because it's where you can build an audience for your message. I think it's important, too, that when you build a body of work, you have something important to say. You have a collection that holds together and has a voice. Your collection sends a message. These sharks are beautiful and critically endangered. These fragile corals are dying because the temperature of the ocean is rising. It's important your art has meaning to you. Your collectors will recognize your commitment and associate with your message and share and appreciate your passion. My passion is the ocean and ocean environments. I love painting and being here with all of you for one ocean. It is my joy to share my work with you and I hope you enjoy it too. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? Nice Nicely done, Mary. It's very oh, good. Very, thank very good. You. Thank you. It was nicer to be able to hear it than to say all that again. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. I'm glad we were. Right. Right. There's little yeah. flubs, and I just kept going. I was like, okay, <laughs> that's good enough. People know me. They'll forgive me. Yeah. <laughs> so. No, that was beautiful. Thank you for, make, for making that happen. That was great. All right. So. I am going to jump into our PowerPoint and then Mary, you can tell us about some of these individual okay. artworks and maybe what inspired right. them. And I know for me, I'm always fascinated by how you pick pieces of stone and just kind of make them fit perfectly with whatever it is you have in mind. So yeah, it'd be great to hear about it. I'm okay. going to start this. Mm -hmm. All right. So here we go. There's Mary. Okay. <laughs> and let me get to our first one. Love this turtle. <laughs> um, this was one of the first pieces that I did on marble and I kept it in my own collection. And the marble was actually, um, came out of a building that was a hundred years old. And that was quite a find. It wow. has um, a really, it was really dense and, um, and very reflective in places. Uh, I wish I could find more of that because now it, it's not really the same, but I, I always liked that piece. I liked how the reef um, was in there. I just painted on top of the lines that came together quite easily. That's so neat. I do love this one with all the little fish above him. <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't give it up. I said, you know, sometimes you keep some and m most of the time I don't, but that one I did. Yeah. So I just you, still, you still have the original of this one, Mary? Yes, I do. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. nice. Yeah. <laughs> no, you can't have it, Michael. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. I do have it. Yes, I do. <laughs> nice. How all heavy right. is it? Is this one? How, pardon? Oh, how heavy is this piece of art? Um, that's probably about 15 pounds. Okay. It's not th that heavy. 
<laughs> Until you have to travel with multiples. <laughs> well, the largest piece that I've, that I've traveled and sold was 150 pounds. Wow. Wow. And, um, and I even, I chiseled the edge. I made an undulating line and oh, everyone, pretty. it was expensive to buy a piece mm. that big. And every, and all the people at the marble store said, well, you can't do that. And I said, I bet I can. <laughs> and I did. It, and it turned out really awesome because me, was what was about, on that one? About five eighths inch thick. And so when wow. I, when I chiseled the top, um, I had worked in glass for years and I used those same techniques that I learned in glass. Yeah. And so I did it from the backside and I, um, you know, cut it like I was cutting a piece of glass and then went in and actually chipped it with a, with chisels. Wow. And, wow. um, and it was a green turtle on a reef go nice, figure, nice. but I'm good at that, you know, so that, yeah. So it's it, hard not and, to love uh, a turtle. <laughs> and I put in a lot of really personal things like, um, um, after a hurricane, I found a sponge, a tube sponge on the beach that had washed oh. up. And I always loved that tube sponge. And it was actually had been growing on scallops. And I put that in the painting. You oh, know, I thought, oh, cool. that would look good in there. There was a spot. And so I got my tube sponge out and I looked at it. And I, yeah, so I had a lot of really personal things like that. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah, that really adds a lot. Uh, yeah. of meaning behind paintings it was, like that. It was really fun to sell it too. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> You're like, I don't want to drag this thing around anymore. <laughs> no, <laughs> I said, you know what? They were happy. I was happy. We were all happy. Yeah. Good. <laughs> Very cool. All right. Now this next one is probably one of my favorite favorites of yours. This amazing oh. octopus. Oh. You know what? That was so easy. Uh, huh, I was, I was treasure hunting for marble and that is a whole art in itself. I mean, it's, mm. it's long. Most pieces have nothing there. And I saw that octopus in that piece when I picked it up and hmm. I thought it is so, you know, it's such a, a creature of disguise. To yeah. me, I could have hung it on the wall just the way it was and seen the octopus. And I thought, well, I can't do that. I better paint it, you know, so I can sell it. And uh, um, it, it, it came right out. It was just waiting in there. I just so loved cool. that piece. It was a really odd size. And I drilled holes in the back so it could be hung on the wall. And um, when I brought it to the show, it was gone in like 15 minutes. I, I believe it. This piece you know, is so you know, neat. Sometimes you go, well, that is so unique. And a yeah. marine biology teacher bought it. Huh. Yeah, that's that really, was cool. really cool. She was a biologist. She was like, I got to have that. Yeah. That's great. Yay. All right. What have I got for you next? Oh, the manatee. Uh, um, this was a collaboration with um, Brett, also a team member of the Elysium Expedition, mm -hmm. a fellow Mola Mola. Oh, Yay. well, he wasn't a Mola Mola. He was on the demand. That's okay. Right? He's allowed. Yeah. He, yeah. <laughs> so um, I saw him at a show and uh, he told me he was getting ready to go photograph the manatees. And um, I said, Brett, I've been there three times. I have this marble I think would be perfect for that brackish fresh water color mm -hmm. I went three times to photograph these manatees and I got like butt shots or I just couldn't get a good shot so no, I said no. um can I work with your calls things that you don't publish so he sent me the photos and then you know I added my own things but uh it was just so great to have his perspective I mean he swam right up to him he spent time with them and um so I really enjoyed, I really enjoyed painting these. That is really fun. It was great to have something to work from. I didn't know they were so hairy. They have yeah. all that really stiff hair on their muzzle. It's real flat. Mm -hmm. And I had no idea that was like that. So, yeah. So cool. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. And he liked it. He was happy too. He said, yeah, oh, that's pretty. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Oh, and I love this one with all of the plastic. Um, yeah, tell us yeah. about this one. And this was um, an idea from Michael. He said, uh, 
will you paint me a, a plastic iceberg? And I said, yes, I will. And I went hunting for marble and I found this piece and it had the, um, you can see the crystalline vein that is the top of the iceberg and that was in the piece. Mm. And it, the piece was large, so I, I marked it. I said, okay, I want you to cut the middle out of this. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> of course, but that's really what, that was the deal. And, and I did it in the golden proportion, um, which is 20 by 32. And um, so I tried to show nature and its perfect balance. And then the, uh, the influence of man is portrayed by the plastic iceberg and the warming oceans, the microplastics, the, the ghost nets, and um, the, uh, I, I couldn't bring myself to make the reef white. I just, I couldn't do it, but yeah, you could put bleaching in there, but yeah. So that, um, that I was brought to ADEX for plastic free ocean. And that was, you know, I was really honored to be able to do that. And I have always appreciated that from Michael and Ocean Geographic that they, you know, made that happen for me. Oh, that's Thank nice. you, Mary. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> it, 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 it's a, this piece of art says a good message in it, and it says a lot. Mm -hmm. did, did you end up uh, selling this one or you kept it for yourself? No, I have it. I okay. still have it. And um, I have a couple of shows that I would like to display it coming up if I get, if I, if I get chosen. Um, I nice think piece. it's kind of a good piece to have mm. to keep, unless, yeah. you know, unless. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> unless the right buyer okay. comes along. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. That's, a, that's right. Cool. Yeah, I love this one. There's just so much to look at when you really start to kind of focus yeah. in on the details. There's so I much just, going on. I was just so surprised how that in that iceberg was that is was in there. I mean, it was like, okay, well, there it is. And that real dynamic line, mm -hmm. those, um, I, I really, I really liked that piece for this. Yeah, it's great. I really love this one. Hmm. Thanks. Yeah. Oh, oh. Alex's favorite. And this um, it is. marble <laughs> I love it. had all these little balls in there. And it reminded me of Sargasso weed. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, what lives there? A leafy sea dragon. And I have not been to Australia, and but I have been to the Shedd Aquarium in Chicago. <laughs> and that's where They've I They've got some beautiful them. leafies. Yeah. You know what? <laughs> They're gone. They're gone. The last time uh, I went, they were gone. But right. anyway, I, it just all, it all just really worked out. And I, people come to me and shows, but well, this, the original is, I don't know if I sold it or not, but they say, oh, you have such an imagination because they actually think I made it up. And I say, <laughs> no, it wasn't me. <laughs> this is real. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they're amazing. Yeah, it I is. love this it's... one because those details of, of the, the sargassum, they really are hard to tell if it's part of the marble or if it's what you did. And I love how subtle that is. It just makes it, yeah. It makes it Thank better you. that way. I like it. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> oh, the jellies. The jellies. <laughs> Gelatinous. And, I, you know, I just, I, I uh, really enjoyed painting, painting the rhythm in, mm -hmm. in there. And um, I, there's a jelly cam. If you, if you go to the Monterey Bay Aquarium mm -hmm. website, mm -hmm. you can log into their jelly cam anytime you want. And it is the sea nettles. And so that's, I painted a lot from that when I was working on these. And Very it's, cool. it's real soothing. You know, if you, if you need, like you're stuck somewhere and you need to take a break, you can get on there and watch the jellies <laughs> and just, you know, moving around it. Yeah. So it's pretty therapeutic. That's nice. Now these are on canvas, right? These are oils on canvas. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love these when you bring them to the show. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and so much detail in this the one. The spot fin butterflies. And oh my gosh, that was um, just really a labor of love because <laughs> those 
little butterflies, they, I believe they pair for life and mm. they stay, you know, right together like that. And, um, I, I found a sea fan on the, on the beach after a hurricane. And, uh, it's, I mean, when the wind's still blowing 50 miles an hour, I go, you know, looking for things. And so I get that sea fan out whenever I want to paint something like that. And it, you know, it's, it's, uh, tedious, but it's so it's so great how they're put together mm -hmm. and the geometry in the fish is I, I just it was challenging but I, I really enjoyed that I'll bet and then and I always love the detail of yeah the little flamingo, flamingo tongue, cowrie. tongue yeah yeah I, it's easy know, to miss because you're looking at the fish <laughs> when I was young I didn't know better you know and I would <laughs> do things like that you know like put it in my dc pocket or oh, something i would no. never do that now but you know right. i started going a long time ago and we didn't know yeah you know we didn't know yeah. not don't take that seashell or whatever yeah but, right yeah so i always have those if i want to paint one in i just get it out and look at it <laughs> There's a lot that, of that's kind of convenient. A lot of detail in in, in this one with the gog going in behind. How long does it take you to to do this one? Um, you know what? This was like so beyond hours that th there's no way because to even it's I never even t kept track because um, it's so many layers. There's a lot, a lot of layers, and I don't think the photograph shows well, but um, it really does go light to dark and um like there's quite a bit of light around the edges and it's just there's it just took me a lot of layers on those fish all those scales i don't know i usually work on three or four paintings at a time so mm -hmm. i don't get burnt out and and i can put something away and come back to it and this was the painting i had up for a long time and i enjoyed working on it um but I also would take breaks and, and I usually then will do like a big oil painting with a big brush. And so I can keep a, keep something else going. That's not so detailed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is really a lot to look at. I can imagine if you were doing multiple pieces that required this much focus. Right. Oh, I don't, your, I, your I eyes would have trouble. Different <laughs> things. Yeah. 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 Yes. It's a lot. Yeah. I did a job in pointillism one time, a big job. And I oh. went to the doctor afterwards. I said, something is wrong with my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> you need to take a break. <laughs> yeah. But, You're like, yeah, you, know, you just need to not tired. look at something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're tired. Like at the end of the day, I can't read or anything. I just have to just like, you know, look at a big screen TV or, or just close right. them. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. That's a lot of eye strain. <laughs> yeah, it, it you don't realize it, you know. I'll bet. Oh, the sharks! I love my these. collaboration with Michael, and um, I could not believe these three sharks were lined up like this in Michael's photograph. And um, I asked him for some images of sharks because I really. I wanted to paint sharks and I and I you know my images are of their tails swimming away from me and um and so he sent me a file and this was one of the of the photos that he took um in Garden of the Queens right yes that's right and they were lined up j just like that and I added um my own light source and I put in the reef on the bottom but the sharks were truly um in that position that was their yeah that i just i just couldn't get over it i just thought it was um i love how directional it is i, I told them to move left right and come to the minute <laughs> <like that. laughs> yeah well that was so the, nice the shark director. you're, the, you're the, the maestro yeah yeah that absolutely the shark whisperer so, so fun. Um, I think it's beautiful in this. I can see the surface of the water. It's just, you know, sh shimmering down to the shock is amazing. Thank you. And, and the original photo was amazing. So <laughs> it's such a joy to be able to work from 
you know, great photographs. And that's, I love the collab, the collaborations that I've done for yeah. that reason. Yeah. Thank you. That's great. Yeah. This is one of my favorites for sure. Love it. That'll be hard to part with. I still have it. <laughs> I'll bet. Uh, it and then will the be. Clowns. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the little clown. They're fish. so I mean, cute. You can't go. Uh, I got to Indonesia and I just, I just could not believe how many varieties, how many kinds there are and um, how fast they are. I mean, just, it's just yeah. constant and the anemones just dancing in the current. I just, I just loved it and how the anemones fold in. I, there was so many things I learned that I had just had no idea. So the little painting that I'm, we're going to do today um, is the clownfish. It's um, I just, took this clownfish on the right hand side and and blew it up and um so i did kind of a value underpainting and then i'm going to paint the fish just as an example that's great yay yeah. yeah so this piece of marble definitely looks different than the others oh this is onyx and it okay. is um it, it light transmits through it um mm -hmm. it is uh it is more fragile and uh the color i just thought the color was just beautiful it is it looks like a watercolor painting in the background it's beautiful yes yeah. i have some more of that and um it looks like truly ice with Ooh. with ice melted you know when when ice is melting it has water on top like mm -hmm. It's the problem now, from what I yeah. understand. Yeah. I have some really great paintings that are going to come from the awesome. Arctic. Then I'm saving that. So <laughs> when I oh, go over there. Oh, perfect. That's a good there. idea. Yeah. That's a good and idea. It, and you know what? My daughter, Carly, is the one that said, Mom, that looks like ice. You should paint the Arctic. And I was like, duh, you know, I should. <laughs> and so, yeah, yeah, it's pretty awesome. Going to save it up. All right. Cool. But I love the coloring of that. that oh, me too. That I love onyx it. and that. It's a gorgeous kind of stone. Peach. Yeah, it's it yeah. was that's pretty cool. Thank you very much. Yeah. Oh, a view and, that we could all use about now. <laughs> uh, all paths of this painting lead to a wonderful place. Mm -hmm. um, and there, there's a lot of directional lines in this painting. Uh, and we spent a lot of time under that dock right there. So yeah. oh, this wow. holds a special place. And I love all those boats are actually trees that are dug out. And mm -hmm. yet everyone had those brand new motors. I was having, I was just thinking that those are really expensive. And they had <laughs> nice, a lot of nice, a lot of nice motors. Yeah. Yeah. On a boat made out of a tree, you know? was a little different. <laughs> yeah. Right. Not what you yeah. would expect, really. Well, I was surprised. I was like, wow, I bet you're enjoying that because that little boat probably hauls, you know? That's for sure. They're real narrow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It yeah. Moves. So that was fun. I, I enjoyed I enjoyed every single one of these for yeah. I worked from my photos. I took I took a lot of photos and uh and then I sketched a lot of those little huts. Yeah, I remember. So there's so many that it will take, yeah, a lifetime to get them all out, probably. Probably. Yeah, that's all right. All right. And, and now this um, is a newer one for you. Yes. And uh, when I was in Indonesia, I saw the, the forest of these coral gardens and these hard corals and I, it just blew me away. The, I had never seen hard corals like that, just stacks and stacks. So my collection is called the Blue Heart Collection. And within my collection, um, I'm doing a coral garden series. And I, I really enjoyed painting this. It was difficult. It was difficult, but I was really happy that I plowed through and and came out the other end you know <laughs> right so, yeah and it has three little yellow fish i don't know if you saw those yes yeah 
noticed yep. those. Yeah, but <laughs> so I, I just I just never saw anything like that before. Oh, and my next painting is aquaporas. And oh, those are fascinating too. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. So yeah, all the yeah. hard corals are really gorgeous. And I think uh, oh. probably underappreciated because I... you just get used to seeing them in these reefscapes and you're like, oh yeah, yeah, hard coral. But they're really gorgeous when you focus in on them. They're yeah, beautiful structure. And I think you know, I don't I haven't seen many paintings like the things I paint, you know, mm -hmm. and this is like a lot of people, you know, say, oh, you don't want to paint flowers? Mm, no, I really don't. These, these are my gardens like this. This is, yeah. I approve. This is the right kind of garden. <laughs> so too. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. Oh, and then this is so cool. That same uh, stone, of, of course. But yes, wow. the onyx. And um, I had this for a long time in my head, a long time. And I thought about it. I, I, just, I just carried it with me for a long time. And I knew I wanted to put that wave in. Mm -hmm. I knew that motion was in there. But what was it? What was it? And... Um, our friend, um, Matthew Smith, Maddie, who was on our boat, Amala Mola, yes. um, <laughs> published this photograph of a humpback actually diving under the water. And, and I saw the position of the fins and I knew that it's, that's what I've been waiting for. So I, I wrote him and said, I love it. Can I use that photo? And uh, he said, yes, I'd be honored if you did. So he, re he really liked it. He was happy. You know, he's happy I did it. And um, the title is Ethereal Joy. And it's, it represents the resurrection of the humpback from near extinction. I love that. That's so nice. Yes, I think so, too, because, I mean, there, I think there were like less than 500 in the world. And mm. now they're, you know, they're back. So it, we can do it. Yeah, and, and it's a nice, yeah. encouraging story of hope. Yes, so that's, I, that's good. what I thought. I thought, Much you know, needed. it's nice to put something good in there. And, and there is a joyful painting. Yeah, definitely. Well, very cool. Thank you, Mary. Yeah. I'm going to stop. Well, thanks. Us? Yay. Our, yeah. Um, well, do you want to paint? I don't know what kind of time we have. Or I think that would be great. Please do a painting, painting for us. <laughs> do that. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. I have, I have, I'm just going to turn this. I'm all sure. set up. I even put my little palette out there. And oh. I don't know. Let me smooth this over. Sorry. No, you're taking fine. a second. Go right ahead. I don't have a way to put that in back, really. That's okay, it's, that works. It looks kind of dark. Well, that works, yes. It yeah, does works. see my yeah. shadow is right in there. That's fine. I know. That's okay, though. Yeah. Oh, bummer. Well, <laughs> well, um, yeah, I don't know how. Oh, you know what? I have there. another light I can turn on. Hang on. Okay. Sure. Um, and now let me know if that's too much. That's fine. That's good. It's that's good. good. Yeah, okay. yeah. Then um, you don't really care if you see me or not. So, <laughs> um, uh, so okay. this is the little clownfish. And I just put a background of anemones. And I just so far painted values. So that could, um, that could be painted over and okay. and if you were to make like a page for a coloring book this is actually called um a la prema painting but it's direct painting so my paintings are usually done with layers and this is um executed like a coloring book uh it, it's to promote uh speed and freshness in your painting so neat. Yeah, you just direct paint. 
right on there. And these are oils, mm -hmm. and I should have done acrylics because they dry faster, but, uh, right, 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 right. you know, I was working in oils, and I didn't feel like changing out my paintbrushes. So <laughs> I said, it's okay. Yeah. yeah. So, um, you use, uh, I'm going to use, like, just a limited amount of color. So I know this was a clownfish from when we were in Indonesia. Um, other than clownfish, what do you think were some of your, your favorite fish that you wanted to paint from when you were there? Well, that clown trigger fish was pretty awesome. Oh, yes. It's and a fish. Um, I have some sketches of some Moorish idols, Ooh. and I couldn't get a good picture. And so Levante shared with me. Ah, oh, very and, good. Um, he said, I said, can I paint from this? And he said, yes. So, um, you know, because my photography skills are you know, there's so many that are so much better. <laughs> so, you know, why not if they're willing to share? And they were, so that was awesome. So oh, that's um, good. I, that's good. Yeah. I'm gonna lay that in there. Now I'm gonna come back. Just gonna do so the rule when you paint is uh, light to dark. And I'm just going to kind of make that thick because So the picture you, right, that's uh, the jetty from Indonesia, right? Arborek? Yes, Arborek. I've painted that like three times so far. It's a fabulous place. jetty. It's just. You know what? Well, and that diver swirl. Oh, yeah. Right there, that's Lindsay. Oh, that's how cool. Under there. Yeah, that's what oh, I said. Oh, I love I it. There you are, Lindsay. Yeah, yeah, I thought that was pretty awesome. That's, that yeah, is that, pretty cool, see, actually. That's her right there. Yeah. And I was, I was in the boat shooting back when I took that picture. Yeah. Oh, that's so, cool. That's yeah. really cool. It's so fun to paint your experiences, you know? Yeah, when, that, that uh, is really nice. Yeah. I did watercolors for a long time, and I had a whole house full of my dives. So in the winter, I could turn the heat up. <laughs> I put a, uh, made it really humid, and then I would paint. <laughs> so yeah, that's kind just, of just like being survive. there. Yeah, just like being just there. Just like being there. Yeah, right. Yes, you're you're changing your whole perspective there. Yep, exactly. Looks great. Yeah. That's nice. And then, um, if my daughter would come in from school with like drama or something, I would say, "You're wrecking my zen." <laughs> <laughs> that was my standard line. You're wrecking my son. I'm, I'm here, you know, in this happy place. So, yeah. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's nice. where painting can take you, you know. Well, yeah. this is kind of messy because that black didn't dry, but it's all right. Oh, that's all right. That's yeah. It's already starting to look much more like a clownfish. <laughs> fun 
So um, that's kind of what it is. And I thought, you know what, this would be really fun to make a like, little um, coloring book like mm. this. These would be amazing. The value, and then the kids could paint those however they want, you know? Yeah. That would be great. I think so too. Because oh. it's, uh, I kind of made it like outline. So then the blending is, is it's kind of like block color mm -hmm. um, when you do these. Well, that's great. Yeah. So I don't know how much time you want to have on this, but. Oh, we can spend a few more minutes. Okay. Might as well. Yeah. <laughs> See that clownfish pop out of the page. Okay. <laughs> that would be great, though. I can definitely see this being an amazing coloring book. You'll have to let us know when that's going to happen. You know <laughs> what? That would be, like, really cool, wouldn't it? It would. I think it I would think be it, a wonderful um, one. So yeah. Mary's going to join us uh, back on World Ocean Day, and perhaps maybe we could see, a, uh, you know, some, some of Mary's uh, painting in time lapse on that day Ooh, yes, yes. Time okay lapse so would be amazing um, i've already uh you know i told you i'm i'm a better artist than like video <laughs> or, or whatever you want to call it so i um i called up my friend and said all right i need you to make sure i do this right so <laughs> he said okay i'm on it and um so he's learning right now everything we need to know <laughs> Yeah. Well, that's oh, great that to hear. Yeah, wasn't that nice? Yeah. Yes, yeah. very nice. Jim, yeah. Okay. He, uh, we worked together for a long, long time. Uh, we had a glass studio. And um, golly, we did and a maybe, lot. Maybe, Mary, would you have a, want to attempt to paint a polar bear for World Ocean Day? I, oh. Well, I, I thought I was doing that other painting. I've already, I thought I was doing that time lapse one. Yeah, yeah. You know what? I was thinking I should do a polar bear on that marble. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Um, uh, if you want, That's I'll show it to you. It's yes. really awesome. Sounds great. I'm just going to check real quick it? on Facebook and see if we've got questions as well. Oh, okay. Everyone is enjoying this very much. Oh, well, we have a well, We have a question. Okay. From Diana. So Diana says, uh, Mary, your love of the ocean shines through with these breathtaking paintings, carrying a beautiful message that makes you want to do everything possible to protect the ocean. They really do have a voice. When teaching young children to paint marine life for the first time, where is a good place to start? What should be the most important message to teach kids? Okay. <laughs> now you're making question. my brain go. Yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> I guess that it starts at home, really, with what you put down your drain would, you know, I think not to teach obscure things they can't relate to. Kids mm -hmm. can do their part, don't you think? Just uh, where they live. For sure. Yeah, focus on like how to make a difference locally. Recycle and to not use plastic water bottles. Um, I mean, it's something every kid can do. Yeah, for sure. So that's Focus on local waters. Helps. And, and, and say, world peace. Should I say that? <laughs> bring your kids to the aquarium. You can't bring them on yeah, the water. Bring, the kids or bring to them the to the aquarium at a very young age because that they develop their affinity with the ocean, with the marine animals. Yes. Bring them to the aquarium. Yes. Yeah, especially and, you know, for a lot else? of us who live in the Midwest, you know, like when you bring live in them. a place where you don't have an ocean. Bring them to an aquarium and, and let them bring a sketchbook with them. Yeah. You know, yeah. those, uh, those um, clownfish, I, I wanted, or not the clowns, that, that leafy sea dragon, I knew I wanted to paint that. And um, I didn't, you know, I haven't been to Australia, but I did, I went to the aquarium and they had that awesome exhibit and it was um a circular remember that that was very cool yeah oh yeah and yep. so I, that's how i that's how i got to study those fish and oh that's and neat photograph yeah yeah 
I know I always uh, have loved Shedd Aquarium in Chicago. It's uh, That's, yes. They really have an incredible collection and a wonderfully dedicated staff, and they really do uh, take such wonderful care of their animals. So, well, yeah. Um, yeah, I've been there so many times because every time it's I went to Chicago. a beautiful Chicago, place. Yeah, yeah, with Carly, where do you want to go? Shedd Aquarium? I said, yeah, yeah well, I've been there like 20 times. Is that where you want to go? Yep. <laughs> so that was okay. I was, I was happy. Now she's always go back. Out. Yeah. Yeah. And just graduated. That's exciting. Yep. Yes. And then Very I got cool. to go with Peter that time that you gave us passes. And we yeah, had that's right. fun. That yeah. was fun. That was fun. Yeah. That was awesome. I'm glad. So yeah. we have another question from Larissa, and this is about the... Oh, hi, Larissa. Yeah, you, I was going to say, this is the Larissa that you know, so yes. <laughs> um, and this is about your uh, clownfish piece, but the one that's actually on the stone. She's wondering what the base background color is of the uh, clownfish with the lavender anemone. So, like, what's your base color behind all of that? Where do you start? Um, well, uh, a lot of times I... I uh, I lay down, um, like just value, like black. Kind and of white. like this. Yeah. yeah okay. Like this. And then, and okay. then that gives me, uh, you know, something. Yeah, that's a neat way to start. I, I hadn't really considered that as, well, you know, as, an, as a non artist, I hadn't yeah, really considered that. It's always the light. And like I said in my little talk there, um, so many times you're just making it up and um i don't want to do that same old background with stripes that it's just done over and over and um but it's 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 sometimes it's really difficult, difficult. yeah i can imagine okay i've got another one for you from facebook okay. this is from uh, marty snyderman hi marty um he says uh, what a wonderful presentation thank you Oh, is it thanks. hard? For, yeah, yeah. Um, Marty's wondering: Is it hard for you to know when you're finished with a piece? Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I never am finished until I put it away for a few days. Well, the octopus—that was an exception. I did it. I walked away. Most of the time, I um, paint it. I, I turn it around, I put it somewhere else, I start something new, and in about five days, I come back, and then I can look at it with fresh eyes and say, okay, that is, uh, you know, I'm done, or something is bothering me. Yeah. Something is amiss or whatever. Mm -hmm. Very cool. See how this is kind of like a coloring book? Yeah. It kind of could be. No. I mean, I could see how that yeah. would be I mean, really because, applicable. It would be great. Yeah, the lines and... Uh, That's so fun. Oh, so uh, the, the website where you can uh, watch the jellyfish, that's Monterey Bay Aquarium, right? Yeah, Monterey yeah. Bay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's fun. It's, um, it's a cool, it's a really cool thing. That's I great. used to dive in Bonner, and they had a, they had a, um, did you ever dive at, oh, I can't remember, <laughs> the plaza, the plaza, oh, and, you know what, maybe it was Captain Don's Habitat. Oh, they probably, yeah. A webcam, and an octopus went and wrapped around it, and that was the end of that. <laughs> that was Oops. great, that was like. You know, they thought they were being so smart, and that octopus just loved it. And then you couldn't see it. So it that, that's it was funny. fun while it lasted, but it didn't last very long. That is, <laughs> I know right. it was great, wasn't it? Yeah. Yes. And then last thing, I guess, um, the whale one that you did on the uh, uh, that beautiful piece of Bad onyx. Yeah. Yes. Um, have you done that? That that's acrylic as well. I know. Um, but did yeah. you, you didn't do a version of that on canvas or are you going to do a version of that on canvas or no, you're just going to do that no, one as is? I, I have never really painted a whale before because so many people paint whales. I thought I'm not, that's not my expertise. Yeah. Fair. I won't go there, but then that was just, it was, that was just it. That was just yeah. perfect. 
So it really, yeah, it fits so well on that on yeah, the piece of stone. It, sometimes that is very, know, very, very recent, right, Mary? That whale. Yes, um, that's one of my most recent paintings. Mm -hmm. um, well, it, and it really, it did take me a very long time to do it because um, I had it in my head for so long. Like I, I was ready. I was really ready to paint that. I, I usually think about things for a while. Yeah. And um, like right now I have four paintings in my head that I'm ready to do. Oh, wow. Mm hmm so so what do you think do you think uh, the wanting to like have having a subject that you want to paint informs your choice of rock or does it finding the right rock inform what you want to paint well or both <laughs> no, i find the marble and i and i don't go with a preconceived idea i go okay. and and I see it and I say, wow, you know, well, that time I did the iceberg, I was mm. looking for a piece and that Ooh, was right thing to me. That was like, wow, look at that. That was pretty <laughs> awesome. You know? when, when you go look, yeah, that's great. Yeah, but um, a lot of times I come home empty handed because <laughs> that, yeah. you know, it's hard to find pieces that have I, I want to have an area usually that's very dark in the marble so that you can get a dimension to your work. Got it. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, Mary, and thank you very thing. much for showing us this. Uh, yeah. we have hey, to it was kind of really fun. Up. And yeah. I look forward to I seeing so you on Ocean Day with the time lapse of your work. Um, so thank you for joining us and good luck. Yes. And uh, we see You're you again. Welcome. You'll have uh, to show us how the clownfish turns out. Yeah, exactly. I know. I'll, I'll finish painting it. It's cute, isn't okay. it? Yes. I yeah. love them. And They're for always everyone great. watching us today, thank you very much. We'll come back tomorrow, but it's going to be with the evening of the uh, 11. And this time we will have uh, Isabel from uh, Switzerland. Uh, her arts is on a uh, wetsuit. And yeah. also, oh, the wow. she also discussed with us the environmental impact of neoprints and what is the right suit to wear. So join us tomorrow, uh, which will be morning, for those in the United States, will be the morning of the 11th? 11th. 11th. Yes, 11th. I was like, mm, <laughs> give morning, me a moment. Right. Yes, morning of the yeah, 11th. our morning, 11th. Yeah, right. and then your evening. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Mary. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks, very Mary. Much. Thank you. Have a nice night and have a good morning. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye.